Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Shooting the Breeze. I am your friendly neighborhood soda, Matt Majot. And as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, Ben Rayner. How you doing, Ben? Good, how are you? I'm actually really looking forward to this conversation because I have with us, uh, pretty much I call him my brother from another mother over from my other channel, Schmoes of the North. It's my good friend, Dave Lees. How are you doing, Dave? I am doing great. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk with all of you guys. Guys, and you know what? I've been a big fan of this show and everything you're doing. And you know, I'm just happy to be here, guys. I'm I'm happy. Let's have fun. Oh, that that's awesome to hear. And I'm looking forward to our conversation because I know it's gonna be the opposite of what we had with Lou. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I strive and to be. Over this time. <laughs> I I strive to be the opposite of Lou in everything I do. It's a pretty lofty goal and not that hard to accomplish, to be honest. <laughs> so nor like the purpose. The main thing of the show is we let our guests pick whatever topic we want to talk about. And like I've alluded to, Lou's last one was the existentialism. So, Dave, what is the topic you would like to discuss? For those of you who don't know me, I love two things in this world. Myself and movies that are objectively bad. These are the things I love most. And wait, 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 wait. What is for your fiancé rank on this list? You know, you know, that's not, Soda, that's not important, man. You're ruining the joke. There was a funny <laughs> joke I was doing. This is oh. why I, this, you know, Soda? I'm sorry. <sighs> I love, I love movies that are terrible, but are my guilty pleasure and just everything. So I wanted to come here and I wanted to talk to you guys about some stuff that is, you know, you know, it's not good, but you yeah. love it anyway. Yeah, and like my thing is like I personally subscribe to the theory that you shouldn't feel guilty for loving a movie no matter what it is. But you know, I I too have my guilty pleasures. My number one, and I mentioned it in the chat last night, Grease Two. That movie is horrible, but I love it to bits. I've actually never I've never seen Grease Two in my memory. I know I definitely have, but I don't remember anything about it. it that's a movie where you know the script kept changing every time they'd show up there was new uh new pages first time director an arrogant uh first time male lead who was a former stripper um <laughs> michelle really? Pfeiffer, the first, yeah maxwell caulfield was a stripper uh yeah uh you know michelle pfeiffer and i think it was yeah it was her first major role because i think it came up before uh scarface um, Michelle Pfeiffer's in that movie? Yeah, she's Stephanie Zanoni, the lead, head of the Pink Ladies. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and uh, her song, Cool Rider Man, that has not left my iPhone in years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I could, could you give me just like the quick like pitch on what Grease 2 is? Because again... Okay, okay so more or less, it is not... Much different than the first Grease, except the roles are reversed. So instead of, uh, you know, in the first one, Sandy, who's new to the school and trying to impress uh, Danny, it's the other way around. It's her, it's actually her cousin who from Britain, whose name I don't remember right off the top of my head, but he comes to the school and he falls in love with um, Michelle Pfeiffer's character and he creates this biker persona to impress her because her thing is she likes a cool writer, right? And yeah, and then at the end he reveals himself, and they, you know they do a whole dance number. You know we'll go together, and there's a show off, uh, uh, a face off with the rival biker gang, and yeah, and there's like I say, good numbers. Reproduction's fun. It's a fun song about the sexual re reproductive system. And, <laughs> yeah, it's a great song. Um, and then you've got prowling, which is how to pick, you know, uh, what kind of women you like, and as the title suggests uh, the opening number is a really good back to school again by the five tops it's a great dance mm -hmm. uh song number it's about going back to school for the first day and yeah <laughs> i could watch poetic about this forever but um, by the way, I'm just on my Google. His name is michael michael yeah mm. michael now carrington that's what it is Michael Carrington. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you make more British than that? I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't like the sweaters, and yeah, he's very British. It Michael Carrington is the guy in every movie who the protagonist is trying to steal the girl from. Yeah. Like, that... 
Uh, I love that name. <laughs> Speaking of which, he actually has a tie to the show we're doing on our other show, Ben. Yes, he was in the planet. I know mean, what? No, Maxwell Caulfield is the brother-in-law of Haley Mills. No shit. Yeah, his wife is like twenty years older than him. Yeah, I know you were in the pilot of Number Two or No, the original. I believe so. Yeah, he was in in there, but yeah, his his uh, sister-in-law is Haley Mills. Shit, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're uh, on our other show. We're doing the Saved by the Bell run through. We just finished the original version, Good Morning, Miss Bliss, which I don't know if you've ever seen that, Dave. I have never seen Saved Save by the Bell. I've seen a billboard for the new Saved by the Bell, but it was a little before my time. Yeah, I I, I can understand that. It's, it's definitely a lot of people more of mine and Ben's age have a more nostalgia for it. Yeah. What about you guys? What's the first movie that comes to your guys' mind when you know you're talking about movies or you know they're bad but you love anyways? I know this movie is bad, but I love it anyway. Everybody loves the first one, but god damn it, I love more to come out the navigation. Oh wow, I haven't seen that one in probably 15 years. That one is fun for me. Uh, I don't know what happened in between the first two. Yeah, and a whole new cast. Yeah. Well, the only kill you over is you can. Man, and have you read it? Yeah. I, I believe it. I believe he know only kill you over. I think he is, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You try no, to... no, Katana also. Talisa Soto, who I also. Okay. Yeah. It is. Are you new reading it? Yeah, who's the new rating again? Oh, it's um it, fucking the dad from Dexter. Oh, hey, really? Yeah, James Remar. Huh. Yes, it is James Remar because that like I'm glad that someone else talked talked about this because I also love love those movies. I love both of them equally but separate. It's I you know some of the people in those movies I don't believe ever knew that they were being filmed. I think they just <laughs> found people who acted like... That was them in their real life. And I'm so... I'm so happy that movies like that can get made. It just brings mm. me so much joy. And you know what's scary is that's still the best comic book movie... Uh, video game movie, I'm sorry? Well, well you know oh. there's a new one coming out next year. Well, okay. That's one that's out so far. Look, and as of today, I'm coming to streaming. Like, a soda. I gotta stop you for a second. Like, I, it's a, I love Mortal Kombat again. Huge fan here. Year of my birth was the year of Mortal Kombat the movie, so I'm very, pre it's very precious to me. 1994. Oh, okay. Never mind. I wasn't born yet. Um, I thought it was 95. But Wait, I might. I'm the one who might be wrong. Hold on. Keep talking. <laughs> but. Anyway, anyway, come on! Like Detective Pikachu is a fun is a fun romp. Um, Still haven't for, seen it. Oh man, it's a good it's a good movie. And then uh, uh, the new Tomb Raider. You know what? No, now that I'm saying saying these other movies out loud, none of them make me smile the way Mortal Kombat or Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Annihilation. She has, that's the that, thing. you know what? Yeah, I I retract everything I've said. I'm sorry. Except yes, it was 1995, not 94. I I really say that. I like Sonic. I don't know if you guys Me too. I like that. I really think that is a nice video game movie. But I have more fun with Oh yeah. More fun with in combat. Yeah. And I, I'm I, I'm one of the people I loved I, I didn't okay. I really enjoyed the new Tomb Raider because I really liked the new games. Okay. And I thought I thought it was a good representation of it. I didn't really like the one with Angelina Jolie, the first one. It's been a it's been a minute for me. Yeah, <laughs> A fun fact. Now I watch the uh, Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider movie about once a month at work because one of my clients is obsessed with that movie. Really? Yeah. So you know, I have in the last year, I can honestly say I've probably seen that movie about twenty times. And you have to have it memorized by now. You know, there's a lot of pew pew, and it's like, whoa, Daniel Craig, what are you doing in this movie? Yeah. Whoa, Jorah from Game of Thrones? Yeah, and the bare, yeah, and the bare back of Angelina Jolie, which is the only thing I remember from it. 
She hey, has... come on. It came out I was a prepubescent teenager. No, no, no I get it, Soda. I get it. <laughs> I'm not <asking> really. <laughs> she has just like she has a giant robot set up in her house just to spar with. Yeah. And her butler's just like, This is my day. I bring her guns on a silver tr- silver tray. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that was a that was a fun one. It, again, like I said, it's been a minute since I've seen it, but I do remember enjoying it. I, I don't recall the second one all that much, though. My I don't have clients obsessed with that one, so I could not help you. Nice. I don't even know that I've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah, it's I only I, I think I might have seen it maybe bits and pieces, but it doesn't ring a bell. But back to James Remar, there is one that he was in around the same time. That uh, as Mortal Kombat Annihilation that I love, but it doesn't get much love. It's the Phantom. Oh, I oh, love I, the Phantom. I gotta yeah. see that. I gotta have to see that. Oh, I'm glad that from you. oh dude, you it, it's it's such a cheesy pulp comic book movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe it's in, right. Yeah, Billy Zane is a phantom. You've got Catherine Zeta Jones before she exploded on the scene with Master Zoro and Entrapment and stuff like that. And um, who was it? Christy. She was the original Buffy. <laughs> yeah, she's in there. Uh, I think Peter Boyle is in there. Yep. Um, Treat Williams is the villain, the over the top villain. Yeah. Fun yeah. fact about the Phantom I hadn't seen it until last year when I started playing in uh, like some fan leagues for the Schmodown and stuff. And in my first three matches, I missed three Phantom questions. And really? I like, I, I, it's like, I have to watch this movie because it is coming up all the time. And wow. I, I went into it being like, this movie, I'm going to hate it. I don't want to see it. Billy Zane, I'm not a huge fan of. And I just, I loved it. The, I think I saw that and Darkman the same weekend also. Well, oh, so that's a great thing. So I was like... Where have I been living? What's going on? <laughs> Billy Zane, where you been at, man? My dad introduced that to me when it came out. I think we might have actually seen it in theaters because he grew up listening to the Phantom radio series. So he he liked the Phantom. And that's how I came about the movie. And yeah. so we had a VHS and I watched it all the time. I have, I have a few more movies I wanted to mention real quick. Of course. I am my wrist. I know I'm not a woman. I love that movie. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Klein's the best part of that movie. And the Green Hornet. I, Ooh, have fun I haven't seen that one since theaters. I have fun with that movie. I'm sorry, what was that la- last one? The Green Hornet. Oh. I, I also love the Green I love that we just keep bringing up movies that are like, this. I should feel bad about this, but we all love it. Yeah, Seth I, guess, I, haven't, man. I haven't seen Green Hornet since it was in theaters. I remember it was it was fine. I just haven't gone back and rewatched it. I I remember there was an ad for the Green Hornet on the back of a cereal box that I was eating, and I was I wasn't eating the box. I was eating the cereal inside the box. <laughs> um, Thank you for elaborating. <laughs> I just want to make sure you know I want I don't want to be coming down here to this American show and giving a bad name for Canadians. All right. Hey, but hey, hey, hey. it's it, it's a dual citizenship show. Get it right. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, Soda. You live you live in British Columbia. That might as well be California, as far as I'm concerned. All Dude. right. Uh, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> um. What was I talking? Oh, Green Hornet. I love that movie. Cause, wait, am I wrong in thinking Billy Zane's the bad guy in that that movie? Yeah, and uh, Phantom Four. Mm, that's, that's right. Because right. right. that right. was after Inglorious Bastards, no? Must have been. I yeah. can't remember. I remember he was like... everywhere after Inglorious yeah. Bastards. What a different movie that would be if my in my different sideways reality where Billy Zane plays the Christoph Waltz role. Hey, Amen. <laughs> that's if one thing Titanic showed us is that Billy Zane is actually a pretty damn good villain. Billy Zane is a good villain. Can I? Can I, can I tell a, uh, a small tangential story about Titanic before we get back onto it? Of course. That's what we're I, here for. So I love movies just in gen- general. And I'd always heard about Titanic. But growing up, I had only ever seen it 
when it played on TV. Because for whatever reason, the one of my local channels got the rights to play Titanic. So it was always on like channel channel 19. It yeah. was like every other weekend you could find Titanic. But I had only ever seen Titanic on uh, on TV. I had never like put in the VHS. I knew there were two VHSs because I had seen the uh, that up on the wall. Yeah, I still have my copy of that. Ooh. But I had... Uh, I'd only seen it on TV and I had only ever, I'd never caught the beginning of the movie. I always came into the movie around the, uh, the paint me like one of your French girls scene. So like pretty close to when they hit the iceberg. Yeah. It's about two thirds of the way through the film. And then I meet my, I meet my fiance and we're talking and I find out, uh, and she's, I find out that as a kid, one of her favorite things to do was just watch Titanic both VHSs rewinded and do it again. So we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I've never seen the beginning of the movie, but like this is where I come in. I assume there's like fifteen minutes uh before that where Leo gets onto the ship. I had no idea that movie was th- like three hours long. Really? I had, I had there was a whole movie of Titanic is that there was like ninety minutes that I had never seen of that movie and I didn't even fathom existed i thought like yeah leo he gets onto the ship in some like weird way that's why billy zane's mad at him because he's like oh you shouldn't be here i had no idea what was going on i didn't know anything about the relationship with him and rose i didn't know about uh victor garber's character at all uh freaking uh help me out with uh Joe Bennett from The Office. Uh, what's that actress's name? Oh, Kathy Bates. Bates. Yes, Kathy Bates. I had no idea about any of them. And they're showing these people. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a big deal. Like, that was, they were just an extra in Titanic. And then, like, this was only like, this is also not like a thing that happened years ago. This happened like a year and a half ago. Um, we're having this conversation. We are like, no, we have to go watch Titanic. And I had no idea. There's again. There's like a whole movie of Titanic I had never seen, and I gotta say I loved it. No, yeah, I have I loved Titanic to bits. I, I, I know, I know you love it, man. And I had to say, I only said Titanic feels like two movies in one giant movie. Yeah, you have that. You have the love story, and then you have the historical drama. And I always, me and Fisher. I always prefer the historical part more than the love story. In that no, sense. And you know what? Fair enough. They're both equally as good. Um, have you guys ever seen Titanic in 30 seconds as done by bunnies? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? You Okay, I'm going to send it to you, Dave, so you can watch it later. So it was um, back in... I think the first time I saw it was on the internet when I was a teenager, but... On the special edition DVD that they released in 2006, it's actually an Easter egg. There's uh, at the time there was this web uh, channel where they would reenact movies in like 30 seconds, but with bunnies, like animated bunnies. Oh, and okay. the Titanic one was the one I watched the most. I I thought you were gonna send me tell me that there were real bunnies. No, and no, I no. was like, that's insane. That would have been that would have been fun. Oh, that would have been hilarious. Such well, I was like, such well trained bunnies. <laughs> now, yeah, it's like a minute long. Oh, I'm gonna definitely check this out because this sounds just like the dumb humor that I love. Oh, totally. And speaking of dumb humor and thing, things I love, I want to shout out to my guilty pleasure uh, movie series that. I love it's one of the only things that has ever made me make a long Facebook post. And that is the Sharknado saga. That's my blind spot. I've never seen I, it. That's okay. That's okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wax poetic for like 30 seconds here. Go ahead. One there comes a time in every generation where a film series can transcend not only being a series and being an art form, but also it just becomes a feeling. Yeah. Sharknado are they're all so bad, but they're all so good because they are the ultimate like 
get some beer, get some wings, watch these with your buddy movies because you're like you're having a conversation about like whatever you did on Tuesday and then you're like, "Oh my god, Tara Reed's getting attacked by a shark. Where did it come from?" And then when the trilogy uh uh came through, you know, Sharknado 1 obviously, Sharknado the second one, Sharknado oh hell no. When all of those came out, I was like, you know what? One of the best trilogies of all time. Put it up there with Lord of the Rings. Put it up there with Toy Story. Put it up there with the OG Star Wars. Back to the Future, get off the mountain. It's Sharknado time. <laughs> but then the fourth one came out. And did either one of you know what the fourth Sharknado is called? Um, I No, but I think it's got something to do with the White House. Uh, it does. I think that's the one that has... It, the plot involves the White House, but it's called Sharknado 4, The Fourth Awakens. Because it came out the year after The Force Awakens. Wow. And I, I just watched, I saw it, and I was, like all people are with their franchises that they love, I was very hesitant. I was like, why are we going in? We ended the trilogy perfectly. You know, we're all very happy. These are three terrible movies that we can all enjoy. And I watched the trailer, and I saw a male stripper, like, you know, pump, uh, do a little uh, air hump thing, and make a shark go flying. And I then got on Facebook, and I wrote a lengthy uh, Facebook message saying, you know, Pretty much what I just said about a franchise transcending time and space and becoming yeah. a feeling. And then I said, but I have been proven wrong. Sharknado 4 The Fourth Awakens will be the greatest film ever in the history of cinema. <laughs> and you know what? It wasn't, but that's the point. And that's why we love it. Well, I love it. You two should watch it. That's funny. If you only watch one, Watch the first one because you won't get all the inside jokes. Yeah. But then, once you've watched one, it's like Oreos or Pringles. You can't just have one. You got to eat the whole sleeve. Uh, next time I'm off on vacation, I think I might I might do that. You know, Christmas <laughs> is right around the corner, Soda. Yeah, and I did put in time a practication for a week off, so here's hoping. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> You I mean, like on the same vein, like you know what I really, really love those um, director video sequels to like famous raunchy comedies, like The American Pie Presents, oh, and then Van, the, the two Van Wilder ones. You know, for, I don't have the same uh, connection to American Pie because the first American Pie movie I ever saw was uh american pie reunion oh i love that one that was and the I, second one i saw in theaters and i was like oh i really i really like this and then i went i decided hey you know what would be a fun thing to do with this series i've never seen any of <laughs> what if i watched them in reverse chronological order and it oh, didn't help bad. me it didn't help me at all i didn't understand what was going on <laughs> i didn't get what i didn't get what eugene levy's role was i was like there was a minute before I had seen like any of the main series ones where I was like, so is Eugene Levy real or is he like a fairy godmother? Is he just, he's just coming in and solving everybody's problems. Pretty much. Like he was the, he was really the only main connection in those direct videos other than the fact that a stiff was in the movie. He was the only main connection. <laughs> he was in all of them except the one they just released girls rule, which is very good by the way. Wait, 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 okay, stop the pump the brakes. Yeah, they're still making American Pie movies. They just a couple months ago released another direct to video one, and uh, it's called American Pie. I think it's American Pie Girls Rule or some of that. And basically, it's it's an inverse of the first one to a degree where they there's four girls they make a pact, but it's not like to get laid or whatever. It's to to find their you know their soulmate sort of thing. And one of the girls is a stiffler. Guys. What a time to what a time to be alive. I know coronavirus is terrible. But like I'm so happy we live in a world 
where for whatever reason they keep allowing American Pie movies to get made. Hey, like I said, this one is actually is probably the best of those direct to video ones. I well, all all the ones direct to video. Would you say the canon or, or something else? Uh, not really. Okay. Like I mean, they never really mentioned them in the other movies. But honestly, this one, if it didn't have the American Pie movie, American Pie part of the title, it would work as its own film. Just I mean, I mm-hmm. sorry, go ahead. Man. No, I, mean, oh, I was going to say, just like a uh, comic book series, canon is what you make it. Yeah. Like, I mean, if I'm, I don't even think they make mention to, like, Jim or anything like that in the in those direct-to-video ones. No. They only mention the sniffer. Yeah. As you would, oh. it's a character. Oh, and his character had a major and major role in each of the oh, yeah. original movies. Yeah, his role, he definitely, yeah, if you watch, like, he went from a supporting character to, like, one of the main ones. Yeah. Let me ask you, let me ask you this. Did you say on the American side topic, do you have a favorite sniffer moment? Yeah, it's easy. The dance from number three. Okay. <laughs> that, that the, hands down. The hands down. The hands down. Okay. See, I I really like, and maybe it's just because it's the first mo- one I saw. I really like when in American Pie Reunion, where the one guy is like, "If you two, I forget which character, like, you punch me and I'll sue you for everything you worth, you're worth." And then Stifler comes in and punches him and is like, "I ain't worth shit." Yeah, and when I saw that, I was like, I can't believe they just homaged Rocky Five, mm-hmm. <laughs> because that there that has, happens at the end of Rocky Five. He uppercuts George Washington Duke, and he says, "Sue me for what?" <laughs> that might have made you really happy. Man. <laughs> Rocky Five, man, I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure. It is, but because of how movie. much everyone hates it. It's no, it, I mean for me. It's a movie that I don't know if I like, but every time I'm not watching it and I'm just thinking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, I like Rocky Five. Yeah, I'm of the boat. I've I've said this before. I think Rocky Five is the better made movie, but I over Rocky Four. I think Rocky Four is the worst of the franchise, but it's still as fun as fuck. Get your your, your lying tongue. Back in your mouth, Soda, I will not hear you disparage Rocky IV in this house. I'm not disparaging it. Did you not just hear me say I love Rocky IV? But I'm basing it in terms of actually like technical stuff. Rocky V is the better technically made movie. He punches communism to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Okay? That's a lesson we can all live behind. Yeah, which reminds me, I'm wondering how when they do finally release that director's cut, just... If they're going to keep leaning into that, or they're going to pull it back a little bit. Uh, they're leaning into the fucking drama. Uh, I'm fine with. Oh, I am so I upset. We'll just take the robot out. Why are we even watching? If you can't robot, what's this all been about? What is this move? What's this whole franchise been about? If you're taking away my robot, <laughs> the only person who ever truly loved Polly. I mean, and- yeah, Polly. I don't have time to get into it right now because I don't have my whiteboard and stuff with me. But the robot is key to my Rambo and Rocky are the same person theory. Yeah, you still haven't told me this. I Again, I need a whiteboard to write it all down and like explain it. It's very much like I've got it with like the red webs and stuff. This is your Charlie Day's uh, is, uh, yes. Silva. Yes, it's exactly like that. It's exactly <laughs> like that. Because I... I have a friend, the two of us are, if you saw our text chain, all it is, is, hey man, what's up? Rocky quote. Oh yeah, how, how's the wife? Rocky quote. That's all it is. Sounds like a friend I could get along with. And Scott's a great guy, man. And, but, when I, I legitimately, I had the, like, string and stuff out, 
just for the show. I didn't actually need it, but I wanted him to come into. I was living at. It was when I was at college, and I wanted him to walk into my dorm room and be like, "What's going on?" And I said, "I figured it out. He <laughs> went to Viet. He went to Vietnam after he got the brain damage. After he got the brain damage in Rocky IV. That's why he doesn't remember. Then he comes back and starts a diner. It all makes sense." In my in all, in this theory, also there are two Vietnam Wars. Because I was gonna say, you know, soda. Don't think about it too hard. Yeah, because my brain's starting to hurt. There's a second Vietnam War in this universe, so. Because I was gonna say, Rocky Four is after Ram- Ram- Rambo Two. God, yeah, you gotta explain this to me someday, because. Soda, it legitimately would take. I I don't want to monopolize. This would take legitimately, and I'm not tooting my own horn, or not tooting my own horn. I'm not a. Uh, Exaggerate. This would take three hours to sit you down and walk you through every. There are some leaps, and there are some. Jer- if you guys want to have me on the Rocky Exposed podcast, whenever you do that, I'll I'll get my I'll get my red tape out. I'll show everybody. Well, I was actually just about to say I think that would make a great video over over on Schmoes. <laughs> hey man, we're gonna. Hey, you know what, Schmoes in Schmoes in the North. I'll get it. I'll do it. You know. Or maybe yeah, I'd be knows. down for it. We we got some time. You so, know, not giving out Rocky real quick. I have to ask, which is your favorite movie out of the franchise? First one. Okay. But I, I I like I'm one I'm I lump one and two together. Okay. For one story, but it's it's gonna be the first one. Most fun is is like I said four. See, it's interesting for me because. For a long, long time, I would say Rocky 2. Mm-hmm. And my heart would say Rocky 4. And this is very hard for me to say, but it, it Creed is my favorite. I yeah, love th- Creed so much. That is a deserving movie. Like I, I, could, I, I wouldn't disagree with anybody that said it was number one because yeah. it is phenomenal. It has the saddest montage of all time mm-hmm. with learning to be a boxer and beating cancer. Yeah. It's just it has one of my favorite lines where he's asking where he does you're going to the end of the fight. It's like, why are you doing this? Because I want to prove I wasn't a mistake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then it just has one of my uh, my favorite moments in any of the Rocky movies is this really subtle moment where it actually it's not subtle at all, but this small moment where uh, Donnie's banging on the door to Bianca, being like, "I just want to talk." B, and yeah. she takes out her hearing aid so she can't hear oh. what he's saying. I'm like. Tears every time. Tears every time. Yeah. I'm just, I'm getting, I'm getting Missy just talking about it. How about you, Ben? <laughs> a strong, it's a strong moment. Before my, I cry. My favorite moment in that movie, and one of them, it had a funny moment. It was a queen in the crowd. He was walking. He was like, what the crowd? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It just shows Rocky's age. Yeah. That's a great movie. And also where he's about to go over to fight. And he's like, shit, I got to take a shit. <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's like, do you want to wait for me? <laughs> you know, I laughed out loud so hard in that line because my dad, when I was growing up, he always said, if you get into a fight, you know, fight. But obviously I don't want you to fight. Yeah. He And he said, but if anyone... If you ever are forced into a situation where you have to like go to a fight and stuff to have a fight, tell your boys you got to take a shit. No one's going to stop you. No one is going to stop you from taking a shit. It's like, what do you want me to do, man? I'm not going to shit in the fight. And it's like, no one's going to stop you. And by the time you're done shitting, no one wants to fight anymore. Yeah. So sound advice in, in the theater, it's, like I'm cracking up until Donnie gets to the ring there. Yeah. I'm just like <laughs> Dad, look. He wasn't there. My dad was oh. not in the theater <laughs> with me. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and so going back like speaking of soul, like he's outside of Rocky and Rambo, like he's notorious for having bad movies. Is there any other ones that are guilty pleasures for you in his genre? Like for me, I love Tango and Cash. I I have never seen Tango and Cash because for the longest time I thought Tango and Cash and Turner and Hooch were the same thing. So I was like 
Oh, yeah, that's okay. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks has a has a dog partner, and for whatever reason, I had justified in my head because I knew Stallone was in Tango and Cash. I was like, "Oh yeah, he voices the dog," and I'm like, "Just I had compartmentalized that they had like ADR'd in barks or something," and I was like, "That's what, what, what type of shit do you guys have over in Ontario?" <laughs> you know what? Looking back, I don't do drugs, but looking back. It doesn't make any sense. No, Obviously, no. they didn't do that. Those are different movies. Yeah, completely. But maybe, again, this, I believed that until I was like 20. Fair enough. One of my favorite lines from Tango is Cash. He's just like, uh, you always do his Rambo thing. And still one's like, Rambo's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know. Oh, I know I can't remember that line. But in, in that action hero, when they see the Terminator yeah. here, and it's the road, I just crack up every time. Yeah, I mean, that was back when they were uh, warning, like now they're best friends, but back then they were box office rivals, so they were always taking the shot. But did you ever hear how Stallone got to be cast and stopped from a normal shoot? Didn't someone say, if you don't do it, Arnold's going to do it? Yeah. But Arnold wasn't ever going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think it was demolition man. Was he not lying about Schwarzenegger being president or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. President, president Schwarzenegger presidential library. They made that guy president. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know who knows. That's a fun movie. That's another yeah. demolition. That's not movie. a guilty pleasure movie. That's just a yeah. pleasure. No, for yeah. sure. Do you think they got the idea of for Austin Powers from that movie? Austin Powers? No, yeah. I think Mike Myers had that written years before. Yeah. yeah it, it, it is another movie, isn't it? Maybe not. Well, well, yeah, it's about somebody getting frozen, you know, later in the future. I think that's really the only un well Yeah, that and the main character is having a hard time connecting with the current with the present, but outside of that. No, oh, yeah. is it seeing how I am in the vision of the Lord experience here, I got to ask, have you guys figured out the three seashells yet? Nobody knows what the three seashells are. You know, what? go ahead. Once I finally crack and expose Stallone for <laughs> having one massive cinematic Rambo Rocky universe, I'll get to work on the three seashells. I'm just not there yet. I haven't, I haven't had the time. I've been too busy with this. So I had heard out there that if you use two she shells to clamp and use the other one to wipe. Two she shells. Yeah, yeah. She shells. You heard me. You heard me. She shells. Yeah, but though no, that's what I'd heard. You use two of the shells to clamp and the other one to wipe. And I'm like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Yeah, I. I love in that movie where he goes up to the uh, the swearing ticket machine and just yeah. starts swearing at it to get toilet paper. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of a lot of great moments in that like when he, when he has the burger and he's like, "Oh, this is the this is good. This is the best thing I've had in a long time. What what meat is this? Rat." Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> what does Rob Schneider have on or what did he have on Stallone? Cuz he was in Demolition Man and then and like dread. Yeah, then he was in Dread like right before that, I think actually. Uh, Demolition Man was first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was in Dread right after that. So what dirt did Rob Schneider have <laughs> on Stallone to put him in pretty much the same like kind of weaselly role in both movies? Like I, I don't know. Maybe Stallone took a liking to him, but I will say he has one of my favorite lines in the in in Judge Dread where he mocks Stallone. I am the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Talking. <laughs> Talking about Stallone, I gotta say, I have an unhealthy love for the Expendables 2. Oh, yeah. I have an unhealthy love for the Expendables series. I, yeah, yeah. I love just so I have it takes me three hours to watch Expendables 2 because every time Jean Claude Van Damme is on screen, I have to pause and I'm just like, his name is Villain. Yeah. They changed one letter. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty lazy on their part. <laughs> I, have, I have two favorite scenes in the Expendables 2. One is on Chuck Norris 
I heard a rumor. Yeah, um, what the heck? Like, damn. I heard two days of it. Um, and it's revolutionary pain. The Scorpion died or something like that. Yeah, yeah, they did the Chuck Norris joke, yeah. Yeah. And then the, the fucking airport scene. We had, um, we had a Scorpion and Grand Snowboard all shooting up at the same time. That is perfection right there in movies. I'm not going to lie. I was shocked when Liam, uh, Liam Hemsworth's character died. Shocked. I did not expect it to happen. I, that in that's I, 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 no, that's three is the one with Ronda Rousey and the new team where Stallone has to go get them. No, two is where they tried to rec recruit the next generation of Expendables and to get his message across, Villain kills Liam Hemsworth's character like well, halfway through the movie. We're not... Uh, like, let's not pause over this. He doesn't just kill him. He gets one of his boys to hold a knife to Liam Hemsworth's chest, and then he freaking axe kicks it. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> That's pretty over the top, but it's just one of those, like, I thought he was going to be the, like, the future of the franchise. I did not see that coming. Yeah. No. Uh, but no. in Expendables 2, another thing I love is... Bruce Willis and Arnold, they're in the airport like you were talking about, Ben, and they're pinned down, and Arnold's like, I'll be back, and Bruce Willis stops and is like, you've been back enough, and then he he leaves. And I'm like... <laughs> and then yeah. yeah, and then in the first movie, when during Schwarzenegger's cameo, they uh, when he leaves, it's like, what's his deal? Oh, uh, he wanted to be, wants to be president. <laughs> I I love I love them Chris and I love them back and forth. Yeah, especially the back and forth between uh, Dolph Lundgren and Jet Li. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? And, and I miss watching my real fit. I don't know why he was in this moment. But... Yeah, I don't know where. Yeah. Three probably has my favorite performance, and that's Mel Gibson as the villain. Oh the my dude god, dude is a great fucking villain. Yeah. Well, I mean, that really a surprise. And what, sorry? I mean, it's not really a surprise that no, 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 But it was still pretty damn awesome. Yeah. Well, I agree, I agree. Mel, like, Mel Gibson, like, you know, terrible decisions in his personal life. Probably, you know, I'm not here to defend Mel Gibson, yeah, obviously. that's not what the show's about. <laughs> but, like, freaking, man, that guy, he can, that guy can act. Mm -hmm. Like that guy. There's a reason he's Oscar nominated actor. And you know what? He can direct, and good for that guy. Like I, oh, yeah, Axel Red. Yeah. Oh, so good. Like that movie. Oh, now we're talking about good movies, and I'm excited, and I love. Well, it. okay, back to bad movies. What I, I <laughs> Expendables three, honestly, made me want wish that Stallone and Gibson had done something in their prime together. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been a great movie, a, like an actual good movie. Well, yeah. If they had made a Judge Dread two, I could totally have seen Mel Gibson as like a rival judge yeah. in that movie. That would have been like, uh, what's one of the judges in the in that movie or in the comic? Like Judge Death, I think. Is yeah, the that's judges. the only one I know of, and I think that's a clone still of Dreads or some. No, what it, it's a uh, it's a it's a judge from a parallel universe where everyone died. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Right. I might have just made that up. You don't know. You're not gonna go check. Soda challenge accepted. Soda. Why don't you just make let me lie on camera? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. This isn't I, the smoke channel, so go I ahead come, and <laughs> I come. I come to your house and I want hospitality, and you're just gonna fact check me. What Dude, I'm this? not back checking you. I just okay. closed the game. Thank God. Because <laughs> I, I def. Hey, audience, don't tell Ben or Soda, but I, I definitely just made that up. I don't know if that's true. It might be close. Soda might have been right, and I was just trying to flex. But this is, it's between you. It's like me and you, audience. Don't tell Ben and Soda. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, what I miss? <laughs> uh, not much. Just having a little chat with the, you just, yeah. What? Okay, so uh, Ben, you, you were know talking. Actually, hold on, before we go, you know what just actually came to my mind? Can you what? imagine if it was uh, Mel Gibson as Simon Phoenix? Oh, 
Oh, man. Like, uh, and then maybe Wesley Slipes doesn't go to jail for tax evasion because he doesn't get all that Demolition Man money. Yeah, it doesn't make Blade. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Are we about to are we about to throw down about Blade? Because I'll throw down. No, 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 no! I'm not throwing down. I was just oh, continuing thank, on with your bit. <laughs> thank God, because like Blade, still haven't seen him. Any I, of them? Every year, I find. It is my New Year's resolution every year to find a reason to say some motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. I fought <laughs> 16 years that's been my goal. Haven't missed a year. And guess what? Just found it now. Actually, no, I said it back in Oct- October to a buddy who was, he was really, he was really trying to get, get a new job, but his resume, terrible. He was ice skating uphill. Oh, ouch. Just some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about that movie thing then. I just remembered one that I have to bring up. Well, I'm a with was in it, and it's from um, OU. I wonder if you've seen it. Surf Ninjas? Oh, fuck yeah. I watched the shit out of that as a kid. <laughs> what is Surf Ninjas? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh yeah. He's the comic relief side, best friend sidekick. Who think who thinks that he's the lost prince of some Polynesian island? <laughs> Rob because Schneider does. Main characters are. It's it's fucking nuts. It, it it's it, it's a that movie is shit. So, but it is so funny. Leslie Nielsen as the villain. Oh wow, I love him. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. And, 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 and the then, younger brother is apparently like a, a future <coughs> seer. Like he comes from a long line of that because his Sega, um, fuck, what was the handheld Sega again? Uh, Game Gear. Game yeah, Gear. The Sega Game Gear, he had it, but he was playing, what the game he was playing was like telling him what's gonna, about to happen. So he was just like playing the movie. He's fucking out there. <laughs> so it's like the best scene in Spaceballs, but for a whole movie? Kinda, yeah. Okay, so I have some questions about Surf Ninja. Not knowing anything about Surf Ninja, except that Rob Schneider thinks he's a Polynesian prince. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Are they... Is it a metaphor? Like, are they... Like, are they just so good at surfing that they're surf ninjas? Or are they ninjas on surfboards? Okay, so here's the, here's the basic gist of the story. So the two main kids, uh, one of them is Ernie Reyes Jr., who played um, the, the sidekick in Ninja Turtles 2. Kino. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay. So he's in it, and I don't know who plays his brother, but anyways, they are they are princes from this Polynesian island, but there's something happens like a military coup or whatever by Leslie Nielsen's character. So they have to yeah, see there and with red hair too. It's really weird. <laughs> and I I think this was like around Tim Militian Man. <laughs> what is that hair? Yeah. But basically, so <laughs> The military coup happens. I think their parents dies, and their parents like bodyguard takes the two boys, and he, he sends them to live in. Um, he, he takes them to live in California. He raises them on his own. So that's where the surfing part comes up, and then it's discovered that once they find other princes, it turns out one of them is actually really good at uh, doing ninja stuff. And yeah, because why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a f- it is a fun movie, but I haven't seen it since I was fucking like. 12. Of all the really, it, I think this is our definition of what killed him. Oh, 100%. <laughs> it is a terrible movie from what I remember, but you can't stop laughing. Rob <laughs> Schneider is the <laughs> just funny <laughs> <laughs> I think we killed Dave. Take it away. Take it away. Uh, what is that hair? Yeah. Somebody that was my first exposure to Rob Schneider, too. Really? Yeah. Maybe mine, too. Somebody yeah, that was came 1993, into... so yeah, it would have been around Demolition Man time. Someone came into work, and their <laughs> job was to make Rob Schneider's hair that color. They, someone got paid for that. <laughs> well, it's, I found an even better picture, if it'll let me show it. I love it. This this is the movie I'm going to watch. Yeah, no, legit, you have to watch it. You know what? After we get off, after we get off line, I'll bring you up a clip because it is unreal. Yeah, I can't get a proper big image of this, but I'm going to screenshot this of uh, another image, and it's even more ridiculous of Rob Schneider. He's in a fucking do rag. Wait a minute. 
That's Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. What's he doing? With his now, shoes? see, here's the funny thing, though. He actually is Polynesian. His mom is Filipino. All right. You know what? Good for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. One more. Just okay. one more picture. Okay. Okay, so the... <laughs> <laughs> He can't surf for shit. Look at him. <laughs> Rock, I wonder where I can get that movie because I really want to watch it. I can't tonight, but God, that would make a great weekend viewing. Please tell me where you find it. <laughs> I will. I mean, they have iTunes. I got, I got, yeah, it, oh, yeah, it's on iTunes to buy, so that's probably what I'm going to do, but I, I don't know if it's streaming anywhere. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, but yeah, no, Dave, this is one if you sit, you have to sit down and just watch. Yeah, no, I don't know I'm <laughs> yeah, and I should probably stop sharing screen here. <laughs> Guys, I I came here and I said at the beginning, I just want to have a good time. I just want to laugh, and I am so happy. <laughs> look at that hair. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, look, dude, you should see the fucking the poster. I'm looking at it. I pulled it up on my phone. <laughs> I think we killed Dave. I love it. Yeah. And what's funny is Leslie Nielsen, like that's him at the beginning of the movie when you when majority of it, he's got like a, a Phantom of the Opera thing going. No, he doesn't. No, 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 in the movie. I mean, the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he, he gets what stomped on by an elephant. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and whenever his hand, because he like it crushes his face and it crushes his hand, and whenever his mechanical hand gets wet, it just has a mind of its own. <laughs> you remember how in the video? You remember how he moved? No, I way? don't. I, I I don't want him killed. I don't want him killed. Yeah, we'll leave that one alone. But, uh, yes, Dave, hey, you have to watch hey, it. You're gonna man him and find a move in the robot hand. Yeah, yeah doesn't it, I think at one point doesn't it like grab his crotch? Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> I, I'm so happy you guys invited me on the show. I'm a, it's been a really long week at work. This is exactly what I needed. I needed You're Rob welcome, Schneider. You are invited back anytime. Oh my god. <laughs> That hair. Hey, next time we should do a watch along. I know. You know, I will forego watching the movie and I'll watch it live. I'll like Mystery Science Theater with you guys for this movie. I'm so yeah, that excited. would be fun. That would be awesome. Deal. I'll that's a, that's a special episode right there. We'll have to do it on the weekend. I'll come back for it. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But but only if this video gets. An even number of likes can be done. Can. We'll we'll sick our schmoes of the north uh, fans on it. <laughs> Remember, it's an even number. So if it gets nine, I'm not doing it. Ten, I'll do it. But if moment that goes, if like we're recording the watch along, and I check in on the video and it's got thirteen likes, I'm out. I'm just bouncing right then. All right, man. Deal. <laughs> so do you know you know how strong my convictions are. I'll do. I'm looking right into the camera. I'll, yep, you are. You are. I'll I'll do it. I'll do. Ow. <laughs> you will too. That's the that's the very. Point. Ow. Did you just hurt your eye somehow? I took my glasses off and they pulled on my headphones and then it poked me in the eye, and then I also I think I pulled an eyelash. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I'm falling apart at the seams, man. Oh, jeez. Well, it is almost ten o'clock for you over there. It's way past my bedtime. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got to record another show after this. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. So yeah, you speaking of which, we are almost at the hour time, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit short for that reason, so I can at least you know have a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave, where can everybody find you, my friend? Uh, you can find me at uh, Shmoza North with Soda. We're talking uh, Shmodan. We have a lot of great stuff on our audio podcast feeds as well. Movie reviews. If you liked a couple weeks ago when Lou was on here talking about existentialism, 
He's got a whole podcast for that. It's fantastic. Yes, I've been a guest on it a couple times. Me and, me and Soda are going to be starting up a comic book show pretty pretty soon, and uh, you know, we'll do it. We'll, we'll yeah. get. You. I'm a busy guy, Soda. I know. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's one of my favorite, one of the things I'm definitely looking forward to. So it may say "leaves me alone" there. That's my Twitter. Avoid that. Go find Schmoes of the North. Yeah, well, hey, what's the Twitter handle for that? Uh, at Northern Schmo. So yeah, maybe it's Northern Schmo, and for some reason Lou thinks it's his personal Twitter account. All right, let's not put him on blast here. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, come on, Lou, don't we love him. Well, okay. Oh wait, no, this isn't. No, no, sorry, no, I do like Lou a lot. I'm only mean to him on our other channel. Yeah, it's pretty great. You guys That's should go my... back and check it out. Yeah. And, what about uh, you, Ben? Oh, sorry. what? Sorry, what? No, no. You had to say. I was just gonna say uh, thanks for having having me on, guys. This was a lot. This was a lot of fun. You know, I have to put up with soda a lot over at uh, Schmoes in the North, and but Ben, it was great getting getting to talk to you. You're yeah. a gr great guy. I've loved seeing you, and I get I get why soda loves being over here because it's a uh, this was a fun hour. It it really really was. That explains why you haven't been on a video with me in a really long time. <laughs> Um, yeah. Bad and internet issues, but well, you know, I digress. So, Ben, where can everybody find you? Oh, you can find me on my <coughs> Twitter, Matt Medvin and Q. Every Thursday here with Matt. Every Sunday on Get Twitty with Matt and with all cohorts, Jordan and so, and finishing up Geek. Every Saturday on um, on Matt Schmodown, and every Saturday also on on recapping the movies with Matt again. Yeah, you mean recapping the past? Yeah, recapping the past. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just, taking old, we're just taking shows and we're just watching them right now. We're doing Save by the Bell, and I it's gonna be fun. Which reminds me, now I can finally binge the new reboot. I'll tell you why afterwards. Ooh. Yeah. Where are you in between? Yeah, uh, I I, uh, I subscribed to a free trial on Amazon Prime for a channel, and I, it has all of it on there. So, did that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for myself, uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at soda underscore the underscore saxman. And like these gentlemen says, I'm on the show with, with these guys all all the time, and I, I have a lot of fun. Dave is definitely one of my favorite people I've met this year because of this. That's the only good thing Lou has done. <laughs> We like Lou a lot. I just want to make do. that clear again. I, I feel like I'm put. I don't like to. I only talk shit to people when they're in the room. I just want to make it very clear. I like Lou a lot. Yeah, I love Lou. I love I love Lou as well. Uh, if it wasn't honestly, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. So I actually owe all this to Lou. And no, it's it's 100 percent true. If he hadn't oh. put up that call for all Canadians, I wouldn't be doing this. No, I I, I looked down and uh, this the Surf Ninja poster is still there <laughs> and i i like my eyes made eye contact with leslie oh, yeah. nielsen going ah yeah. there is one more thing do you want to you want i i'm i've hinted at it do you want to announce it here dave do i want to announce what you know damn well what i'm talking about oh uh so sh uh schmoes in the north recently crossed 100 subscribers on youtube yay good for good for us and in honor of that we are doing something really special we have created uh, we have decided to embark on never before seen uh whatevers and we have created the schmo vivers series a show where your favorite schmodown competitors compete in a simulated version of the reality show Survivor. First episode coming Monday. Monday, Monday. Yeah, check it out. It was a great, great time. I had fun recording it. And uh, if you might recognize the voice for the intro if you pay close attention. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not done editing it. Breaking news here. Wow. So, yeah, no, definitely check that out. It's a lot of fun. You know, if we might be doing more things like this down the pike, too, what we're open to, anyways. So, I'm hoping to. Yeah, me too. For sure. Any, anytime the four of us are together, which isn't very often on camera, uh, it, it's a great time. Yeah. 
So on that note, again, thank you very much, Dave. It's been a blast. Uh, this is like the Adam Witt episode of Northern Consultations was on the other channel. Like I, I haven't laughed this hard on this show yet. <laughs> yeah, we're having a great time. We'll welcome back every time. Oh, thank you so much. And I also yeah. love, in classic soda fashion, he said, I'm going to cut it short, and then proceeded to have a conversation with us for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. And on that note, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. I won't be here. They'll be here. <laughs>